This video shows the steps involved in creating the laminate on a fiberglass roof. It's part four of a five part series where we cover health and safety, installing decking and insulation, edge trim insulation, laminating, and eventually top coat application. This is a warm flat roof design with a fiberglass membrane. You can purchase resin library fiberglass roofing kits in a range of sizes. Simply click the link in the description below. Otherwise, give us a like and subscribe. Before working with resin and catalyst, it's a good idea to size out the various sections of glass fibre matting that you'll be using during the laminating step. This is because once the catalyst has been added to the resin, you've only got a 15 to 20 minute window before the resin will start to cure. In the example we're using here, we're using 600 gram chop strand matting. This is typically seen as industry standard for most fiberglass roofs. When joining or intending to join sections of glass fiber matting, it's a good idea to aim for a 50 to 100 millimeter overlap to ensure a seamless barrier is created in the laminate. So it's a good idea to have all of these sections of matting pre-prepared in advance. Polyester resin requires an MEKP catalyst to initiate curing. MEKP catalyst is added in a 1 to 4 volume to weight ratio to the resin. Concentrations outside of this range will lead to a substandard laminate. So for every kilogram of polyester resin to be added, add between 10 and 40 millilitres of MEKP catalyst and thoroughly mix it in. Lower concentrations such as 1 to 2% Lower concentrations, such as 1 to 2% of MEKP catalyst, are preferred for warmer temperatures, whilst higher concentrations, such as 3 to 4%, are preferred for colder ones. Catalyzed polyester resin should be used within a 15 to 20 minute window to avoid curing prior to application. Prepare workable amounts of catalyzed resin. If possible, practice in advance to ensure concentrations lead to a good quality laminate. The table on the right shows the different quantities of resin in kilograms and the corresponding volumes of catalysts that would, be need, that would need to be added to hit specific concentrations. Adding the correct amount of resin per square meter of glass fiber matting is important in creating a high quality laminate. Depending on the grade of matting, minimum amounts center on 1.1 kilograms per square meter for 450 gram matting and about 1.5 kilograms per square meter for 600 gram matting. If you're building something that requires a bit more durability like a walkway or a balcony, then adding two layers of laminate is a good idea. So if you're doing two layers of 450 gram matting, then add 1.1 kilogram per square meter per layer and 2.2 kilograms per square meter in total. Likewise, if you're doing 600 gram matting and two layers of that, then you want 1.5 kilograms per square meter per layer and three kilograms per square meter in total. You might need an extra 10 to 15% of resin per layer, depending on how the laminate turns out. It's a good idea to accurately measure out the quantity of catalyst that you need. This is a catalyst dispenser. We've added a dye and a liquid in this as an example just to show you how it works. Basically squeeze the bottle and the liquid fills up to the set volume that's detailed on the side. Accurately measure out the MEKP catalyst and carefully pour it into the resin, taking care to avoid any splashes. Once added, thoroughly mix catalyst into the resin. This should take a couple of minutes. Start by saturating sections of the glass fiber matting in polyester resin and applying them to the edge trim corners in this manner. So apply the matting and then rip it across the surface. This might take a bit of practice 
You'll obviously want to make sure you're wearing nitrile gloves underneath abrasion resistant gloves such as these when you're doing this. So once the perimeters and the corners have been done you can tidy these sections up. Because the resin cures quite quickly you'll want to try and do this within a 15 to 20 minute window so it's a good idea to work in sections. The aim is to get a neat uniform and consistent finish across each of the laminated areas. When it comes to laminating the main decking part of the flat roof, it's a good idea to place the sheets over the, the areas you intend to work on and then get adequate workable amounts of polyester resin that's being catalyzed and use a roller to apply the resin to the matting. As you can see, multiple cycles are being applied with the roller across the matting. The aim is to saturate the matting itself in the polyester resin it should expect to see a color change. The matting should turn from white color to a almost see-through, slightly brown colored surface. And you can clearly see that the timber underneath is visible. When dealing with overlapping sections of matting, ensure that there's an overlap of around 50 to 100 millimeters to ensure that the laminate is completely seamless. Once the laminate's been adequately soaked in polyester resin, the next thing to do is to consolidate the laminate using a paddle roller. This is a metal cylinder with grooves and it's designed to drive resin into the glass fibre matting and force out any air bubbles. This is a critical step in achieving a uniform, seamless and consistent laminate. Deviations from this, such as air bubbles or any poorly laminated areas, will lead to a premature lifetime of the fiberglass roof. Once complete, the laminate should look mildly glossy and completely seamless. You should allow it to cure for several hours or until it's mildly tacky. This section intends to show what can go wrong with a fiberglass laminate. Whilst these examples show the final top coat after it's been applied, it's also important to note the condition of the underlying laminate. This example shows inadequate resin coverage, an absence of a seamless barrier between the different sections of glass fiber matting, usually indicating no paddle roller an incomplete resin application. It's no wonder this roof was leaking through the ceiling in this area. We're showing these examples at this point before the top coat's been applied because it means that you can prevent them happening to you when you're installing your own fiberglass roof. This example it looks as though the top coat's either been applied during the rain or the underlying laminate has used insufficient resin causing the top coat resin to fall into the air pockets that have been created. This example is quite simple it just shows the absence of a paddle roller covering this area as you can see the fibers are sticking up and protruding from the laminate this should not be the case it should have been picked up and addressed before the top coat had been applied. As you can see there's an absence of a barrier in between the edge trim of the window and the matting itself. There's also exposed fibers, so it's no wonder there was a leak here in this area as well. And in this example, you can also see exposed fibers. So this was quite a poorly done job. Um, what it means is the water can get in through the fibers into the laminate and cause a leak that way. So that should all be tidied up using sandpaper and reapplied. This video is for general informational purposes only. It does not constitute construction related advice. Resin Library is not liable for any outcomes. The use of information linked to this video is at the user's own risk. 
The content in this video is not intended to be a substitute for professional construction advice. Users should not disregard in obtaining professional construction advice.